So in our last video, we learned the three different formulas for a compound gear train gear ratio. Let's go ahead and write those formulas out for ourselves. So we have our compound gear ratio formula. And so for our gear ratio total, that is equal to, well, the first one was just the individual simple gear trains. And so we can say gear ratio A to B multiplied by gear ratio C to D. But then we also looked at the torque total output divided by the torque total input. And so I can say, okay, the torque total output, so our final gear in this gear train, divided by the torque total input. In other words, the initial gear at the beginning of the gear train. And then we used one more to solve for our total gear ratio, and that was our rotational speed. And so we can say the gear ratio total is also equal to our rotational speed total input divided by our rotational speed total output. And remember, rotational speed has an inverse relationship with the other gear ratio formulas. All the others are output over input, but as torque and size go up, speed goes down. And so these are the three formulas that we used in our last video to solve for a compound gear train. But you might be wondering to yourself, well, can we use the teeth or the diameter in the same way? And the answer is no, it doesn't quite work that way. And to explain why it doesn't work that way, let's draw ourselves another compound gear train. And so I'm going to start with my final gear this time. So I'm going to go a little bit further to the right. And so let's draw, let's, since this is the final gear, I'm going to go ahead and call it gear D. And then turning gear D will be gear C. And so this one's going to be I don't know, maybe about half as big as gear D. But on the same axle as gear C, I'm going to draw gear B. And so I'm going to draw gear B to be just as big as gear D, but I'm going to draw it behind gear C. In other words, I'm going to make a front view of my gear B to C. And so it's important to note that gear B and gear C, the way I'm drawing it is they are on the same axle. So let's say gears B and C are on the same axle. And let me separate that from the formulas above so you're not confused there. And so this system is working the exact same as this system here. We're just not drawing the drive shaft between them. You can just imagine there's a drive shaft between gears B and gear C. And then turning gear B is, of course, a much smaller gear, gear A. And let's give all four of these gears diameters. And gear A is the smallest, so we'll give it the smallest diameter. We'll say the diameter of gear A is 3 inches. And then gear B is way bigger, so let's say the gear B diameter is 12 inches. And then let's give gear C a diameter of 6 inches. And then gear D is the same size as gear B, and so gear D has a diameter of 12 inches inches as well. And my first question is, what is the total gear ratio of this compound gear train? In other words, what is the gear ratio from A to D? And to figure that out, we just need to multiply the two simple gear trains. And so I can say, well, this is equal to gear ratio A to B multiplied by our gear ratio from C to D. That is a G, not a 6. And to get those individual gear ratios, we're just going to use our diameters. And so I'll say equal to, and I'm going to draw my parentheses and draw my fraction, draw my other parentheses. It's equal to my two gear ratios. Well, my first gear ratio from A to B is the diameter output divided by the diameter input from B to A. Okay, so that's 12 inches divided by 3 inches. 
And then my second gear ratio from C to D is going to be 12 inches over 6 inches. Remember output over input for diameters. Well, what is 12 times 12? 12 times 12 is 144. And what is 3 times 6? Well, that is just 18. And what is 144 divided by 18? That is just a total gear ratio of 8. So we can say our gear ratio total equals 8 from gear A to gear D. And so that was too easy, too obvious. Let's make this a little bit harder. Let's say we know the rotational speed at gear A is 8 RPM. And let's say the torque at gear A is also 8, but this is 8 foot-pounds. My question to you is, what would be the rotational speed at gear D, and what would be the torque at gear D? And let's start with our rotational speed. To solve for this, what we're going to say is our gear ratio total is equal to our rotational speed input divided by our rotational speed output. And remember, we need the total input and the total output because it is a compound gear train. Well, I know the total gear ratio is 8. We just figured that out. And I'm going to set that equal to my total input, which is 8 rotations per minute, divided by my total output, which is rotational speed at D. And I'm going to put 8 over 1 so I can make this a cross, multiply, and divide. I get 8 rotations per minute times 1 divided by 8. And so therefore, rotational speed at gear D equals 1 rotations per minute. And then what about torque? Well, we can use the exact same method. We can use our gear ratio total is equal to our torque total output divided by our torque total input. And so torque total output divided by torque total input. And we know our gear ratio total is 8. And set that equal to our torque total output, which we do not know. That is our torque at gear D divided by our torque total input which is 8 foot-pounds. And then once again, I'm going to put 8 over 1 to make this a simple cross, multiply, and divide. We get 8 times 8 is 64. Divided by 1 is still 64. And so therefore, the torque at D equals 64 foot-pounds. And I ran out of room, so I'm going to write that down here. The torque at D equals 64 foot-pounds. And so take a look at that for a second. We started with the same number for rotational speed as we did for torque. But as we went down our compound gear train, rotational speed went down as well. It went from 8 RPM at A to 1 rotation per minute at D. Whereas torque went up. It went from 8 foot-pounds of torque to 64 foot-pounds of torque. And once again, that makes way too much sense because they are inverses to each other. So as one goes up, the other goes down. And so you might say, well, that's great, Mr. Anderson. We've used all three formulas that you wrote out at the beginning of this video to solve for our total gear ratio. But you still haven't answered the question for why we can't use total diameters and total number of teeth for our compound gear ratio formulas. And so let's look at why we can't. So if we have our diameter total output divided by our diameter total input, if we were to use that to solve for our total gear ratio, what is our total diameter output? Well, that's the diameter at gear D, which is 12 inches. And our total diameter input was gear A. Well, that was just 3 inches. 12 divided by 3 gives us a gear ratio of 4. But we said the total gear ratio was 
was 8. And actually, I just realized that you probably can't see that. Let me move this up a little bit. But we said the total gear ratio was 8. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the leap that 4 does not equal 8. These are not the same numbers. So therefore, we cannot say that the gear ratio total is equal to the diameter total output divided by the diameter total input. This is not true. These are not equal to each other. And for that matter, for a very similar reason, we cannot say the gear ratio total is equal to the number of teeth total output divided by the number of teeth total input. And so hopefully that one is kind of intuitive based on the diameters. But if it's not, we'll actually look at why this isn't true a little bit more in detail in the next video. Now I'm out of room. I'm going to draw my signature box here at the bottom of my page. So I need to go to the next page for the next video. I will let you be the judge of whether or not you need to.